So three and one we're going so far. So a lot of our turns, a lot of our final turns are going to look a lot like that, where we're going to be hoping that we don't discard the other cards that allow us to discard other cards and do damage. This is a very RNG-based kind of finisher. I can... There's a bunch of things I can do to try and give myself a better chance. I can draw cards out using my life tap. I can... What else can I do? I can keep cards in my hands. I can try and build the card advantage that way. I don't want the Voodoo Doctor this early, so... And I definitely don't want the Sea Giant that early, so... Yeah, they're going back. I've got a lot of Giants in this deck. I got offered some really, really good cards. And I'm not talking good in terms of value. I'm talking good in terms of... Uh, I got a Legendary. I got two Epics, I think. Maybe three. Yeah, I just got off some really powerful cards. Now, what I am going to do is I'm actually going to be uh, I'm going to be dropping out the useful Brewmaster. And I remember saying in, I believe, my Paladin video, the 4-drop Paladin, the first video that I did for the Hearthstone series, that you don't want to ever coin out a 2-drop if you don't have another 2-drop to follow it up. But I am considering Life Tap to be a 2-drop for me because it's just so powerful for me. I really I need those cards in my hand. So she hopes I like her invention. Uh, the thing that I'm going to do here is I am actually going to hit the Novice Engineer. And the reason I'm going to do that is because there are very few things the Hunter has that deal one damage. Like the Arcane Shot deals two. Explosive Trap deals two. Uh, any charge minion except for the Boar deals two. So, although he probably can have a Boar considering it's a beast and he's a Hunter and there's synergies that are offered with him. But... I can run that removal safely, because if he can remove the card, he would have removed the card, basically. So I'm pretty sure it's going to survive this turn. Considering that he is a hunter, next turn is probably going to be a harvest golem, so that I'm safe from uh, explosive traffic. Or at the very least, the hunter, uh, the golem is safe from harvest trap. Because it'll, like, it'll only go down to a 2-1, and hell, even if it does die to an explosive trap, another one comes up. So it's really good in the value propositions against that. So I fully expect to see a tracking here. A lot of the hunters that I've been versing recently, even the ones in Arena... Arcane Shot, yeah. So, exactly, my trade was right. Yeah, a lot of the hunters that I've been versing recently, even the ones in Arena, uh, will keep a lot of their cards back. Which is super frustrating to me. Jungle Panther, Walking Infiltrator? That overextends way too much. Nah. No, no, no. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Someone call for the now, I do have a really interesting synergy here where if he does play and unleash the hounds at any point, and doesn't kill all of his hounds trying to kill my stuff, I have a Sea Giant response for almost free. Because, well, he's not going to play and unleash the hounds to get two hounds, unless he's desperate. Scavenging Hyena. Ooh, he might unleash the hounds here. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Trade in. Trade in, trade in. Yeah, so he can buff up his Scavenging Hyena. Yep, that's a decent play. So one of my options here is to run in the Voodoo Doctor and then run the Storm in Night into it and then just remove it completely. Or it can take 6 damage. I don't want to take that 6 damage. I'm actually going to do that. And then I'm going to play a Walking Infiltrator as well. So. For the king. For honor. so. As I talk about Unleash the Hounds, he plays an Unleash the Hounds. I'm fine with that, because it means he's less likely to play an Unleash the Hounds later. It's probably an explosive trap, if I had to guess. Ooh. That's frustrating. I'd really like to make that trade for that uh, Acidic Swamp boost. First kill. What? Snake Trap. Really? It's Snake Trap? Yeah, it has to be. So, chill and get your life tap. Job's done. Oh no, it's Snipe! Oh, good thing I still played the Chill and Yeti, because... 
you know, now it survives. <laughs> he could be very lucky and have another Unleash the Hounds and then just trade them in. Starving Buzzard into Unleash the Hounds. Tundra Rhino. Oh, that does survive. It will survive. Hey, hey. I'm fine that he removed that card. The Timber. Seven. Okay, so what I can do here is I can Dread Infernal and I can Mortal Coil into the Acidic Swampoos. And that's going to be my play. Job's done. Awesome. So now if I draw the Mountain Giant out at any point, I can almost immediately play it. And hell, if I can play it for cheap enough, I might be able to get it to drag down the cost of the Sea Giant and just play a lot of threats at the same time. Two damage. Five damage. Are you going to run it into it? Ooh, no, that boar. Mm, that boar. So now, look at this. Look at my card advantage. Can you see how much card advantage I have? It's crazy, right? It's insane. Absolutely insane. I'm actually just going to corruption both of them. Now I just need to play a lot of threats that he can't kill with them. Squire, attend me. Ready, sir. That was dumb. That was dumb. Because <laughs> now he can trade the. Both Squire, of them are over. Attend me. Ready, sir. Oh, and he's got something to populate the field here. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't a clever play. Wanna blow something up? Kill the Squire, do it. Uh, it's not the Squire. So he has six damage on the field, he has two damage from the steady shot. Well I need to kill him next turn. Well so we're going, what, I think three and two we're going now at the moment? Ooh, are you going to trade? No, you're not. Steady shot, do you have that one damage in your hand? Blood him. And life tap myself out of existence. Yeah, I played really poorly that game, actually. I can't think of the specific plays that I made that were really poor, but I know they existed. I can feel in the depth of my soul that there were specific, specific, there were very significant problems with my play there. So I'm going three and two at the moment, uh, which is a problem because my previous Warlock deck, which I ragged on so much, the one that couldn't record or that didn't record because I'm incompetent uh, it went three and three as well so <laughs> if I do that again well let's not do that again because that was that, that was bad I was going to put that one up on the website on the website on YouTube I was going to upload it but fate intervened or rather, my incredible stupidity intervenes. Hold on. Okay, so he can't do one damage really Ready easily. Like, action. exactly like the... Oh, yes he can. <laughs> Ooh, coming out of the Mad Bomber. Big plays, big plays, big plays. Biggest plays ever! That was amazing. That's exactly the split that I needed it to have. Although if he has a holy smite in hand, it really doesn't matter. Because, as I was about to say, very similar to the Hunter, there's not an incredible amount of ways that a priest can do one damage. Mind if I roll me? So he's probably holding off if he does have a Northshire Cleric, because I can kill it for free with the Mad Bomber, and I'll still have the Mad Bomber alive. So if I play the Raging Wargan, he's going to hit it. So I don't... I don't think that. Because 
Because no matter what he decides to hit with the Jungle Panther now, Jungle Panther's gonna die. Now, I do need to worry, because next turn, he's going to have Holy Nova. If he has a Holy Nova. And fuck, he's drawing cards out. I mean, duh. Ah. So he has a Holy Nova. How can I tell? You ask? Because he attacked me to the face. So many hey, possibilities. Hmm. I'll do that. I want to offer him the lowest value proposition for that Holy Nova at all times, and then hope that he eventually gets frustrated enough to use it in a non-optimal situation. Because at this point, it will just remove the bad bomber, it'll heal him for two, and it'll do two head. damage to me. Entirely non-optimal. Non-optimal. Sub-optimal. Listen, you should know this. So for the king for honor. Charge that in there. Attack that that way. Ooh, do I want to heal that? No, I don't. The reason I don't want to heal it is because it's already above Holy Nova. But if I play the Voodoo Doctor and heal it. It still survives, because it's going to survive anyway against the Holy Nova, but the Voodoo Doctor dies. So at this point, if I were him, I would consider using a Holy Nova. Join or die, or both. Ooh, heal yourself? I'm going to run the damage golem into that, like, fucking ASAP. Or apparently I'm going to use Demon Fire and the... So yeah, you can see very, very clearly here how I'm not overextending. I'm not playing the Voodoo Doctor. I'm holding off on playing the Raging Worgen, even though I could have done that rather than the Life Tap. Because now he's at 7, there's a bunch of things he can do with the Raging Worgen that he couldn't do with other things. Okay. This is frustrating. I don't want that Mogashan Warden on the board. So far. Hang on. It's always a good idea to be counting damage. Always be counting. Attack in Soul Fire. Mm. Thank God. Yep. That's a relevant move to make. Ooh, that's the one card I didn't want to have to lose. Oh, that's a shame. For honor. Now, I'm hoping he doesn't have a Shadow Word Madness or a Cabal Priest, the one that can steal a minion. Because if he does, he's going to take the Raging Worgen and he's going to wipe out the Harvest Golem. Ooh, no, it looks like GG. Heal yourself? Smite? Holy Smite? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing with one mana? Corruption. That's not going to help you. It's going to do it way too late. Well played. For honor. We have bested our previous Warlock deck. Previous Warlock deck going 3-3. Three, three. This is currently 4-2. Now, let's see how far we can go. I believe my prediction for the previous Warlock deck was 6, and if I recall, I think I didn't give a prediction at the start of this run, uh, this, uh, this run, so it's a bit late to be making predictions, but I'm going to say 5. I'm going to say I win the next game and then lose the one after it. Go 
Jaina Proudmoor. Jaina. Maze gold. Maze no? shall be mine. So, you know, I don't like this. I don't like anything about that opening hand. First off, the voodoo doctor dies to the ping. But even worse than that, the blood imp dies to arcane missiles. Because they aren't targeted. I'd be really sad to see an arcane missiles come out because the, the chances of it hitting the blood imp are astronomically high. Oh, so she's Murgle Gurgling. That's fine. Um, if I play that, it gets hit by the Murgle Gurgle. Or no, it gets hit by that one and then trades and... Yeah, no, it's tap. Actually. That's a shame. I play the Jungle Panther and then the turn after I play the Storm in Night. So I have a really slow start here. This is unfortunate. This is really unfortunate. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like anything about this. Oh no! Did you fucking draft a Murloc deck? You did, didn't you? It might even be worth my time shadow flaming the jungle panther. In fact, that's what I'm actually going to do. Wow. <laughs> the legendary like Murloc arena deck. I never thought I'd see the day. In fact, there's tears running down my eyes as I speak. For the king! For honor. So just off of the back of that, we have a really big advantage here. Because it seems like he drafted a lot of early game. Or at the very least... It looks... It definitely looks like he drafted a lot of early game. And I have a really good way to deal with early, uh, early game. Or I did have a really good way to deal with early game. That Shadow Flame, I believe, was the name of the card. Shadow Flame. Uh, nope. It's way too far down. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be fun. For honor. Run that in there. With me, friend. Bring it back to my hands. But guess what, guys? Storm with Knight is a charge card. Honor. So here we go again. So what he's probably going to do here is the Fairy Knight trades into the Youthful Brewmaster, leaves me with a Storm with Knight on the field, play something for six. So play... I don't know, what can I predict a card that he has? Uh, considering he is on turn six, I need to continue... Uh, continue. I need to begin considering playing around that Flame Strike. So I will make suboptimal. That seems to tell me that he doesn't have the flame strike, and the reason it tells me that he doesn't have the flame strike is because of the fact that he was intent on removing something to five health, rather than just pinging it, putting it down to four health, and then letting it die to the flame strike next turn. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Now, you may think that that was a really poor play, uh, that I could continue going to the face, but as a mage, he could have a Pyroblast, or he could have more of those fireballs, and then I would be seven different types of screwed. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. I already had that in hand. I didn't expect to be using it against a Venture Co. Mercenary, but I did expect to be using it. Ooh, there goes my Blood Imp. I, hope you like my invention. I don't. So again, if he pings the Chillwind Yeti, he's telling me he doesn't have a Flame Strike. 
If he pings the Ancient Mage, he's telling me he does. Because this is a bigger threat. You want to ping it in every other circumstance. It's possible he has a Frostbolt in hand and he's just trying to get it down to three so that he can burn it. Uh, that's definitely possible. Mountain Giant. Yep, Mountain Giant. Yeah, that'll be fine. The fact that he's had so many times... He's had his hand with so many cards so many times and hasn't polymorphed my uh, Chillwind Yeti when it was much bigger tells me that he probably doesn't have a problem. And the fact that he didn't do it there tells me he definitely doesn't. So he's doing a lot of delay plays at this point. Uh, so... I don't really want to let him. I can fill the board with the Silver Hand Knight, I can corrupt something, I and then I can play wonder. a stealth guy. And... But that's... Uh, then I need to rely on him not to have 10 damage in one turn. Doomguard can remove something, but then I do lose a lot of cards. So many possibilities. There are a lot of possibilities, Gul'dan. There definitely are. I think my correct play is to play everything but the Silverhand Knight and then play the Doomguard last. And I'm not going to life tap because life tap would be an overextension of the amount of life that I have left. I like to use life as a resource, but I am running low, considering that I am versing a mage who can take so much of it in one turn. So he's got three damage on the field at the moment. So see the delay plays? Two cones of coals and a blizzard. Has he got another blizzard or a frost nova or something like that? Or even just a pyroblast pirate? Yeah, he does. This is really unfortunate. Those delays, man. The problem with that is that some point in the drafts, he had to make the decision, I'm going for delay, finish with a pyroblast. That's my win condition. And that means that he seemed that that he got really lucky on his draws to get that many delays and a pyroblast. I don't even know if he has another pyroblast or a bunch of fireballs in the deck. I have no clue. But he has a really pretty good deck. Oh well. I'm I'm not particularly dismayed to lose against that. That's a four and three. I'll be fine. I'll have to beat that record with Warlock one time because it's looking like I'm just fucking horrible at Warlock. That's not going to get me into the arena. I'm going to have to grind a few, grind a few in uh, constructed. Speaking of, directly after this, I'm going to be recording my version of Reynard's Warrior deck because I don't have some of the cards, the Frothing Berserker and a bunch of the other ones. So I've focused more on kind of a combo charge deck where I buff up a creature and activate its enrage with a cruel taskmaster. Go straight for the face. I'm going to open this pack, and then that's going to be the end of this episode. No legendaries. Damn. Golden Demon Fire and a Cruel Taskmaster. I do have enough Cruel Taskmasters, though. I, I do have two, as you'll see. But Amani Berserkers? Mmm, lovely. I'm going to be putting that, actually, in my Reynard's Warrior deck before I... Reynard's Warrior deck. In my Reynard's imitation, called Not Reynard. Man. Upgrade for a warrior. I think I only have one of those. I'm going to probably put that in my deck as well. So this is going to be the end for this video. Hey, 150 actually. It does get me back into the arena. Perhaps I go into the arena again before I record the constructed video. So that's going to be the end for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As much as I... As much as... As much as I did? Bye-bye for now.